Hey my friends, welcome. I am Shailene and I'm here with another video. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about the Windsor & Newton Professional Series uh, paint pans. And this kit here comes with 14 different colors. So I'm going to talk you through these colors. I'm going to do some swatches. I'm going to do a little bit of color mixing and just let you know my thoughts on these. So uh, we can get started. All right, so I'm going to use this 9 by 12 cold press paper to do some swatches. So I'll start by just getting the square wet and I'll do this for each color. So first one here, this is lemon yellow. So you just take your bristles to the color, rub it around in that color, activate it, and then I'll go ahead and just drop it in there. And this is a really nice, cool, cool yellow tone. I really love that color. And then I'll do that again here for the next color, which is cadmium free yellow. So it looks like cadmium yellow, but it doesn't have the, uh, I guess whatever is the cadmium, <laughs> which I believe is, is toxic. So, so that's good. Up next, there's Cadmium Free Red. Which again, looks just like Cadmium Red, but without the Cadmium. And I'll drop this one in here. And I'm using two glasses here. I'm using one glass for dirty water, and then this one is for cleaning water. So I'll rinse off my dirty water here, and then get clean water here. All right, so next is alizarin crimson. And I use alizarin crimson quite a bit. It's, it's kind of my go-to color for anything that's in the pink toned family because it's definitely a more cool toned red. Something I love about alizarin crimson is when you drop that color, just notice how it just bloomed. Like it just took that color and spread it throughout the water really quickly. very easy to get a really even wash with the Lizarin Crimson. Okay, up next is Windsor Violet. And that color just ran through the water super quickly, just like Alizarin Crimson did. This is such a beautiful shade. I very rarely will use these colors in their pure form. I like to do a lot of color mixing, but they're definitely very beautiful, very vibrant. If you are into making super vibrant, colorful paintings, mm, these are beautiful options. <laughs> Great palette here. All right, up next we have Windsor Blue, and this is the green shade. It's 
So we have Windsor Blue Green Shade and we also have Windsor Blue Blue Shade. So you'll notice this one doesn't uh, flow through the, the water as quickly as Alizarin Crimson and Windsor Violet did. Oh, and I think I actually, I goofed this. So this color actually here is French Ultramarine, which is actually, I should know that. That's actually my favorite shade of blue. I use this one pretty frequently. So that's Ultramarine, French Ultramarine. And then next is Windsor Blue Green Shade. Now we have Windsor Blue, Blue Shade. Which ironically is more of a green color. <laughs> so that's Windsor Blue, Blue Shade. Up next we have one of my most most used colors and this is sap green. I use sap green pretty much every time I paint. It's kind of my go-to for a lot of leaf color leaf colors and I like to I like to mix it with other colors to change the tone a bit, but it's definitely a go-to. Just a nice warm classic green shade. All right, this next shade is called Yellow Ochre, and this is also one of my most used colors. This is a color I like to mix with other colors to kind of create more of like an earthy, warm shade. It's just a beautiful yellow as well. It's a warm yellow color. But it just has kind of this beautiful wheat color. Very earthy. Yep, I love that color. Next we have Burnt Sienna. One thing about Burnt Sienna that I have noticed is you do really need to kind of work your bristles into this color to activate it and get a, a depth of color that uh, that you might want to achieve. Like sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to really get that color going. The first pass is always pretty light in my experience. Some colors you can get a really dark color right away like Alizarin Crimson, um, Windsor Violet, the, both of the blue colors up there. Some colors you do need to activate the color just a little bit more. So put a little more elbow grease into it. <laughs> So we just have a few more. So up next we have Burnt Umber. So really get your bristles in there. Get this color activated. And this is a beautiful warm brown shade. It feels very similar in tone to um, burnt Sienna. I think Burnt Umber and Burnt Sienna, they're pretty similar. But this one's definitely more of a warm and this one's more of like a pumpkin orange color. And then just two more. So I'll get my water ready. And next we have 
one of my favorite colors, which is called Payne's Gray. And Payne's Gray is this, it's kind of like a twilight night sky color. I absolutely love this shade of blue. I like to use this as a background color. It's my favorite. If I'm painting a background in one of my paintings and I'm not sure what color I want to go with, I usually I usually just go for a Payne's Gray. <laughs> and then this last color is Ivory Black. And this is a color I actually, I actually never use Ivory Black, mainly because I am able to get some really dark colors with other paints. Um, and very rarely will I use a true black. Usually I'll use like a Payne's Gray or maybe like a Lizarin Crimson mixed with like a burnt sienna or a French ultramarine. Like there's other ways to get really dark depths of color. So I rarely use black, but um, I have done like a black and white painting where it was kind of a grayscale um, type of painting. And I did use black for that. But other than that, I like to use color to achieve really dark values. So, so there you have it. I think I want to maybe also just take a chance here to do some color mixing with you. Uh, one thing I do recommend doing with these colors, so there's 14 colors here, I recommend you grab a sheet of paper and I want you to create a grid where there's 14 spots for colors along the top and then 14 going down. You can see I kind of ran out of space here, so I made these bottom two kind of kind of squatty. <laughs> but 14 across, 14 down, and then I want you to just me in the middle. So say this is alizarin crimson here and cadmium red, which it is. Mix both of those colors right here and as well as right here. And what you could do is you could make this one heavier on the cadmium red side and this one heavier on the alizarin crimson. Does that make sense? And over here we have cadmium yellow with lemon yellow. So this side right here could be more on the lemon yellow side. This side could be more on the um, on the cadmium side. So that way you can kind of get some different shades. And this is a really great way to find different values and different colors and different, um, yeah, just different color mixtures. And one thing you also will notice is I, I, every single one of these little swatches, I started from a darker value and then less and less water to a lighter value here in the bottom corner. So highly recommend doing that with your palette. See the different color combinations you can come up with. But let me just, just for fun, we'll, we'll do some color mixing right here. Because that is what I like to do. I, I like, like I said, I really like to just kind of create my own colors and not necessarily just use what the palette is giving me. Unless you want to do that, and that's fine too. So let me just show you some of my favorite mixtures here. So I really love, I love ultramarine which like I said, is one of my favorite blue shades. So I'm gonna get some ultramarine mixed over here. Make sure you can see it, shall we? And then I'm gonna mix it with one of my other favorite colors, which is yellow ochre. And since these are almost like a opposites on the color wheel, they're not true opposites, but they are pretty, pretty nearly complementary yellow and Purple are complementary, and then orange and blue are complementary, so they're somewhere in there. <laughs> and just find a shade right in the middle of those two that you like. I think I'm a little bit heavier on the ultramarine side. So here is like a really beautiful, almost like neutral grayish color for a leaf. And if you want that to be warmer, you can just grab a little bit more. Mm, it's beautiful. It's kind of like a, almost like a fall toned, fall toned leaf. All right, let's try something different. Let's do, let's do some more leaf colors, some more green shades. So we'll do winter blue, the green shade. And let's mix this one with burnt sienna and see what happens. 
because Windsor Blue Green Jade is definitely, that's a vibrant color. So I'm just gonna tone it down just a little bit, give us more of an earthy, muted shade. That's such a pretty color of green, I really love that. And go more on the burnt sienna side and let's see what happens when we just add a little bit more so you can see it just becomes a slightly warmer shade we can try Windsor blue blue shade so let's mix that one Let's try it with cadmium free yellow and see how that looks. And this one's probably gonna be less, less desaturated and more of a true green. So more yellow, it's gonna be a little warmer. More of the Windsor blue blue shade, it'll be more of a cool color. Very warm, isn't it? <laughs> Very warm, kind of a springy, light green color. And then, so if we went heavier on the Windsor Blue, blue shade, let's see what that one looks like. Definitely more of a cool green here. That's quite a spectrum there, huh? And just because I'm having fun, let's let's do just classic. <laughs> we'll do classic green. So here's the um, sap green color. One of my favorite mixtures is to do sap green with a little bit of yellow ochre. And just warms it up, makes it a little bit more like we're moving into more of an autumn shade. That's a nice color. Yellow ochre just, it adds a lot of, um, yeah, I just feel like it adds this richness to colors. All right, so let's do some, let's do some other colors. So I'm gonna mix some alizarin crimson. With lemon yellow. So when you meet in the middle of these two colors, it's going to create kind of this peach tone. And if you're more on the yellow side, you know, it's going to be more of an orange color. So add a little bit of alizarin crimson to that mixture. Gives it a little more pink shade. I'm gonna give it even more alizarin crimson. I want it to be more of a rosy, kind of peachy color. And we can do some color mixing with purple. Let's see what other shades we can get from this Windsor Violet. So I'll get Windsor Violet mixed here in the same little mixing well. And I'm going to mix this one with, let's start by doing a little bit of, let's do cadmium free red and let's see what that looks like. So this is gonna take us from so here is Windsor Violet here and then here is Windsor Violet with a touch of cadmium free red it's quite a different color 
kind of takes it more into a burgundy. Just dropping a little bit more of that same color, deepening that value. So then I would want to wait for this to dry. If I was going to paint this flower, I'd wait for that to dry and then maybe put some burnt sienna here for a little stamen at the top of that flower. Let's see, we can do some, uh, what other colors do I like to mix? We can do some different blue shades. Even though this palette definitely comes with a good amount of blue options. Uh, between the two Windsor Blues and Ultramarine Blue, which is, and Payne's Gray, <laughs> there's a lot of blue options. But let's just see what we can come up with. So let's mix it with a little bit of sap green and see what that combo looks like. So this is more gonna be like a forest green color. If you wanna warm it up a little bit, just add a little bit more sap green so it's not quite as blue. Maybe this leaf over here is more of that shade. And I can drop a little bit of that color over here so they kind of meet in the middle. So fun, I could just mix colors all day. <laughs> it's so satisfying. And I also didn't even think to mention it, but this palette also has more places for mixing. Just underneath here, you can slide that out. This little guy attaches here on the side. So you can take this outside with you and you can hold it like this. So you can hold it with one hand, do your color mixing. You can put some water here for refreshing your, your paint colors. But yeah, they can take this outside and paint in plein air. So, there you have it. There's some, some fun color mixing for you to experiment with. And I'll go ahead and let's wrap up our little, <laughs> this looks like a little echinacea cone flower here. I'll just give it a little, little stamen here at the top. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed. This has been so much fun for me. Let me know if you had any, you know, aha moments and what you like to, what different color combinations you like to come up with. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.